Hello, JFL here from JFL.com, and these are the seven top ways how not to get things done. So the first great way to not get things done is delaying things. Oh, I don't have what I need. I want to do a perfect job of it. I can't do a perfect job of it, so therefore let me not start at all. We think of any number of ways or reasons to get in our own way, but just starting, showing up as nine tenths of getting the job done, just starting, commencing in any shape or form can make a, an amazing difference. Very often we can do more than we think we can do. And even if we can't, we clarify what it is that's needed. So we're prepared then to follow up uh, at the next chance that we get. And that only happens when we just start. The second way to not get things done is to confuse yourself. Okay, you're there motivated, ready to take action, but what is it that needs to be done? We have different lists, different priorities, or no list at all. So keeping a simple list is a great idea, but a good way of thinking of a good list is a bit like a diagram that you draw for somebody to help them to get to a particular destination. It does not need to be photorealistic. It doesn't have to have every tree. It shouldn't lack key information either, but it just needs to be a simple rough sketch, the kind of thing you do on the back of a napkin. Of course, you can perfect your system as to how you keep notes and lists. There's any number of great videos on that, but just as a simple starting point, think of that diagram. Where do you want to get to? What are the key bits of information as if you were giving directions? Have that as a simple list and follow it. A third great way to not get things done is to do stuff that doesn't matter. It's amazing when it comes to looking at phones or researching things online that don't bear any relevance to our own personal priorities, how much energy and attention we can have for those things. And that's the problem. Sometimes when we're not tuned into our priorities, we just get distracted. We have almost an inbuilt sense of wanting to accomplish things, which in a sense doesn't actually care in the short term what the things are that we accomplish. So we'll play a game or we'll mess around or we'll distract ourselves in some shape or form. Now downtime has a role, but that's as part of a balanced diet with actually focusing on your priorities. So when you keep those simple lists, think each day, what are the key things that need to get done today and put your attention on those priorities. The fourth way we get in our own way when it comes to achieving things is taking on too much. So we've got these epic, heroic Indiana Jones kind of goals for ourselves. And the problem is we can't quite understand how to go about achieving them. So it's easier to just not or to go and do something else instead, which is maybe less important. So those big goals are fabulous. Nothing wrong with that. That's usually a good thing, but breaking them down into smaller steps. What are bite-sized steps that you can actually take? And that's important so that you can actually know what it is that needs to be done. You can conceptualize it in your own mind and take that action. But it's also important motivationally because you get this feeling of achievement then when you do that thing. When the task is too big, you can never really achieve it. It needs to be bite-sized enough that you can do it, but also that you can measure that you have done it. You get the gratification of ticking it off the list at the end of the day. The fifth way to not get things done is to start from scratch each time to reinvent the wheel. Imagine if every time you turned on your computer, you had to program the operating system and set up everything from scratch. You'd never get anything done. Now, we're maybe not that bad in our life, but sometimes we're a little bit like that. What we end up doing is instead of using routine, we try to summon motivation and clarify each day afresh what it is we need to do and to get done that day. So much better is to have that sense in advance worked out of what we actually want to get done that day and use routine. When is the best time of the day to do the thing that we want to get done? If we can line it up in that way, then we don't need to start from scratch each day. Maybe something's better in the morning, other things better in the evening, other things better grouped at different points throughout the day so that then there's a bit of a flow and that makes it much more easy. You don't need as much motivation because there is already then some momentum. Being disorganized is the sixth way to not get things done. Because even if you're motivated and even if you know what it is that needs to be done, if you have to find the thing you need, if there's a cable you need, if there's a piece of information you need, if that's in a box, if that box is somewhere else and you have to climb over something to get to the other thing, the motivation you have just gets lost and drained before you really get going at all. So to set things up in a way that is as much 
that you have what you need to hand as possible makes a world of difference here. It's ergonomics. It's thinking about where is a place that you can sit down and work. If you need to contact somebody, where can you do that? How can you configure things in a way that doesn't need to be perfect, but which is as easy as possible, that makes it feel that you almost just want to do the thing because it's there in front of you. A little bit of management there can make a big difference. And the seventh way to not get things done, and in just a moment, there's gonna be a bonus tip as well, which I think you'll find rather useful. But the seventh way is to need a perfect strategy. So this is where we don't so much delay things, we get started, but we get started on trying to perfect the thing that we're doing. Now, the thing is, nothing is perfect. If you look at the software you run on your phone or your computer, there's updates released. They never nail it the first time. And likewise, it's important that we give ourselves room to grow and to develop by doing the thing rather than spending lots of time thinking about the thing. Now, the thinking is important, that will come too, but that usually comes best through doing the thing. It doesn't mean you don't have some basic planning, particularly if it's something important you're about to commit yourself to, but actually testing the waters can be great rather than jumping in in a binary all or nothing way, getting out there, experiencing it, feeling it. Maybe it's a great direction, maybe it isn't, but you find that out by actually doing it, which can make all the difference in the world. So those are the seven ways not to get things done. And for a bonus tip, a really useful way to not get things done is to spend time with the kinds of people who also don't like getting things done. Now, I don't want to be too harsh. It doesn't mean you need to cut everybody out of your life who isn't super productive. That's not the aim at all. However, if you think about it in reverse positively, adding into your life the kinds of people who are fairly productive can be helpful. And this isn't about trying to achieve things and trying to master everything and solve all problems and achieve all goals. It's more about an attitude, often a more relaxed, gentle attitude of enjoying action, of engaging in a clear-minded way with what your priorities are. So if you can spend time with people like that, it tends to rub off on you. If those people aren't immediately in your life or you can't make direct contact with them, you can read, you can listen to videos, audio online. There are a lot of great supports out there, communities of like-minded people you can connect up with. And that social connection can be very powerful because you just tend to feel that it's possible when you see it happening around you. When other people are doing it, you don't necessarily need to do it quite in the way they do it, but you have this feeling of, it is possible, it is something I can do, it's on my radar, which can be rather inspiring. So I hope you found some of these ideas valuable. If you do, please do like, subscribe, and share. And what's your experience? Do feel free to share it in the comments using hashtag BodyMindSelf on social media or directly at jfl.com.